The, the Global Consciousness Project is um, an, an evolutionary step out of 50 years of prior experiments. The experiments were looking at the relationship between mind and matter, and specifically intention and the, and the behavior of the, of the physical world. I mean, it all devolves back into the question, what is the role of mind in the physical world? From a Western science point of view, there isn't much. I mean, I, I as a, a designer of a car, can get an internal uh, image and an intention to build a car, and eventually a car appears. But that's not a direct link. It requires a lot of work between the intention and the building of a car. But this question is saying more that, is there a direct link between one's intention and the behavior of the world? But an unmediated link, or if mediated, we don't know by what yet. Well, those experiments typically would use very sensitive physical systems and then you would ask somebody to direct their intention at it and try to push the system around, make it do this versus that. So a prototype example is flip a coin and wish for heads. And now flip a coin, wish for tails. And you can do that experiment, and it has been done many times. And what you see after loads of data is that the statistics of the system that you're working with are biased in the direction that you, you want the intention to go. So coins are an okay system to work with, but as mechanical things are very difficult to, to track um, precisely. So electronic circuits started to be used in the 1960s where it did the equivalent of coin flipping, only it was flipping bits, random bits. And it could produce bits very quickly and all of the bits could be recorded precisely. And so you could do an experiment where you have a random number generator going and you ask somebody to force it to, mentally force it to create more ones than zeros. And then now create more zeros and ones. And now let the thing run all by itself as a calibration condition. And what you find after very long period studies like this, and meta-analysis is looking at many studies by many different people, that there are biases that show up in the randomness. The systems that should be random are no longer behaving randomly. So that's about 50 years worth of study. Then in the, in the 1990s, Roger Nelson at, at Princeton got the idea that maybe intention was only a piece of the puzzle and maybe attention was also important. That the act of attending, which we think of internally, a attending is a kind of coherent mental state. You're focusing in on one thing. And if, that, if we can think of that as not simply being in your head but being out there as well, then when you attend to something, it changes and it changes in the direction of coherence. So if the target of your attention is randomness, then a cohered random system is, by definition, more orderly, becomes ordered. And so you can detect that order through statistics easily. So he started doing experiments where he'd take a random number generator, an electronic circuit, and put it in the vicinity of a group that was meditating, thinking that this would create a, a large amount of coherent attention Sometimes people knew the random generator was there, and sometimes they didn't know. And he wanted to see whether the randomness would become orderly during the meditation. And after hundreds of such tests by Roger and me and a bunch of our colleagues, we came to the conclusion that it does become less random in a context where we can infer that there's mental coherence going on, sometimes due only to attention. So in, I think it was 1994 I did an experiment before, during, and after the announcement of the O.J. Simpson verdict in his murder trial. And this was a unique period in history in that it was the first time that I am aware of, in modern time anyway, the first time where there's actually one other I can think of, which was landing on the moon, but a first instance where hundreds of millions of people around the world knew that something interesting was going to happen at a, at a stroke of a f couple of seconds in the future. It was a reading of a verdict which would either say guilty or not guilty. And so imagine the amount of attention that's slowly focusing up to that moment. I figured this would make a great experiment because I could have a whole bunch of random number generators going and we can look in time sequence what is happening to the randomness as we approach the moment of announcement of the verdict where we have maybe a billion people paying attention to it. So I did that. I had five random number generators going, uh, four in the U.S., one in Europe and tracked what was happening to the randomness as we got closer and closer to the verdict and the verdict being read and afterwards. And we found very clear evidence that there was a, a sudden peak in order 
in the, the random generators within seconds of the verdict being read. And of course, it was being read live and carried around the world on radio and television all over the place. So it was a live event worldwide. So, that, uh, so Roger and I and a few colleagues were discussing this. Uh, we later had another instance where uh, Princess Diana uh, was killed in a, a car crash. And her funeral was scheduled a week in advance. So we, we figured we can use that as another example of lots of attention around the world for one event. And we got, I think, 12 of us around the world got our random number generators going. And we analyzed the result. And again, was significant deviation from randomness towards order during the period of the funeral when lots of people were watching. And we thought, well, this, this is great. This is an interesting experiment. But we had to, we had to go through a lot of, of work to get everybody to participate at the same time. So we decided to create a system that would be completely automatically running 24-7 with random number generators located in places around the world. So today, as of today, it's, the project is going for 10 years. There's roughly 70 random generators in cities around the world, and it's been running for pretty much continuously for 10 years. So the, the, the most dramatic event that occurred, and oh, by the way, the reason we did this is because we knew that events would occur that we couldn't predict, and, and that would attract a lot of attention. We wanted to see what would happen under those cases. So the 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 best example and the worst case was 9-11. So 9-11 was not predicted as far as most people knew. And we had uh, 37 random number generators, maybe 30, 36 or 37 running at, at that time. And we were then able to look and see what was happening to randomness before, during, and after 9-11. And we subsequently a bunch of us did a, a, an analysis and we published it in Foundations of Physics Letters, which is a physics journal. Because what we found was unmistakable evidence that the randomness in all 36 generators went away. Slightly before 9-11, at 9-11, a little bit after, and then it, and it went back to baseline. So you have a baseline randomness statistically. You have 9-11 approaching about two hours, two or three hours before 9-11, the whole system, the whole random system became orderly. And then 9-11 occurred, and it went through all kinds of strange random or non-random effects. And then it balanced out after a while and went back to being orderly. So this is one of now over 200 such events, things like gigantic tsunamis, earthquakes, political events, the, the death of celebrities, unexpected things. Those kind of events go into our database. And what we do then is we have this ongoing, continuous random stream from around the world. We, we have a formal way of saying, well, th this event is either predicted or an event occurs and we go back later and we analyze the result um, through, through a standard method that we use. And we can see whether this worldwide random system is behaving randomly or not. And when you look at composite over the 200-some events, the odds against chance are over a million to one now. So we have good statistical reasons to believe that the random generators are not behaving randomly when there are large-scale events that attract a lot of attention. At this point, we don't know then which direction the arrow of causation goes. We don't know whether it's simply a lot of human minds that are somehow changing randomness or whether this is a reflection of something bigger, something like a collective mind of which the collective mind attends to something, and collective mind includes everything else, including what we think of as matter and energy. And so the attention, the change that we see in randomness may be the same in, in some way. It's the same kind of organizing event that changes random events. It also changes our attention. But again, I don't know which direction the, the arrow of causation goes, and maybe it's so complex there is no single arrow, maybe a, a, some giant system of some type.